one, ZK snarks, which are important on blockchains, and they are important um, for homomorphic encryption. Other forms of encryption are pick, picking up now. So the point of this, this is a zero-knowledge, succinct, non-interactive argument of knowledge. That's what the ZK snark stands for. Zero-knowledge proofs are important in Zcash. And the point of these is you can find out if something is true without exposing any extra confidential information. You can ask a question of a system. Um, for example, you can prove that you know a password. Someone could ask you a question, do you know the password? And you could prove that you know the password without sending the password over the wire at all. And that would be very useful. For example, the one Mark Zuckerberg used in attack to steal journalists' passwords in 2010. He, journalists were saying things he didn't like about Facebook, so he programmed Facebook to notice when those people tried to log in and to tell them they had failed three times before letting them in, so they would try their other, key, other passwords. So he would just get a list of their common passwords, then he would log in their email to see what they were saying about it, which is a felony, and he admitted it, it didn't do anything. But the point is, this is very effective. Yeah, and that's the problem, is sending your password to a server. You're exposing a secret to the server. And that is not necessary if you have zero-knowledge proofs. Instead of sending a secret to the verifier, the prover sends a proof.json file containing a blob of data which proves that you know something. And the verifier can perform calculations on the data using only public information, and they can verify that the claim is true without learning a secret. And this is why it's very important, and everybody is developing these systems. It's important for blockchains, and it's important for cryptography in the future where you can have something on a server like your medical record and they can say you have to prove that you're vaccinated and you'll be able to prove that without exposing any additional information about your medical record. The current system is the way you prove that is somebody has to log in and they can see your whole medical record then they look and see that it's there and even if they only tell the cops that it's the one thing the hospital employee is now seeing all this stuff they really don't need to see and with this kind of cryptography you would not need to expose your data like that. You would only find out what you want to find out. You would not have to have any extra data exposed. That's why this is uh, very important, and people are designing uh, systems like this. That would be very useful. Yes, they call this encryption data, encrypting data in use. So your data is always encrypted all the time. You don't even decrypt it to use it. It's almost impossible, but it can be done. And it's quite a chore. You have to install Node.js. Then you have to install Rust. Then you have to install this thing called Circom, which is the circuit compiler. It is quite a chore to do this. Then you install Snark.js, uh, which is a node package. Then you have to run something called Powers of Tau, which is a multi-party computation ceremony. It is mind-boggling. <laughs> Then you calculate all this stuff, and this is what you do when you set up Ethereum uh, miners, too. It is quite a chore. It's really quite complicated. And then um, you build a circuit where you have inputs and the output of C, and you're going to do something simple like multiply two numbers and prove that you know the multiplication without exposing the input numbers. A very simple problem, of course. And that turns out to be quite a chore. And then when you're done with all this nonsense, you end up with a smart contract, which you have to load. So you set up a proving system, and you get all this set up. Then you get a bunch of code, and you have to put it in Remix. It comes out to be intended to be run on a blockchain. So as we talked about before, you put it in Remix in Solidity, all the code that you generate with all that other code, and the end result is now you can compile the contract, and um, you can now verify things down here. You can verify the proof of something down here. So it's pretty burdensome and abstract, and you can go through it if you like, but I'm not planning to go through it in any detail because I think it was uh, far too much busy work for the point. Soon we will have commercial products that actually work where you can install them and use them, where they will do all this for you. Um, people are working on them and developing early versions of it and trying to sell it now. And uh, I haven't found one that I really think works too well, but pretty soon this will be a fairly common cryptographic practice. And when it is, then uh, the project will be more fun than this. But anyway, that's all I wanted to say about that one. <laughs>